Hello everyone. I want to tell you how I grow paramecium and get the food ready to go with them. Now there's no shortage of ways that people tell you you can do it. You can use straw, you can use dried grass, you can use uh, Timothy hay, that works pretty well. Uh, you can use dried lettuce. There's all kinds of ways to do it. Basically, you're just looking for something that will break down for bacteria and then the paramecium eat the bacteria. It's the next bigger guy eats the smaller guy. Put something, start off with something small. I learned down at a killifish show in Tampa about using turnips or rutabaga little squares dried. Now, that's what they look like. It gives you a nice little kind of sort of portion controlled but these are probably four months old and they're still perfectly good I store them in a Ziploc bag you make a whole bunch of them all at once and you've got easy food you don't go looking wondering if there's been anything sprayed on whatever else you get you grab a couple of these and you toss them in the bottle plus that's how big they are when they fill up with water they get a little bigger than that but it's not like you've got all that slimy straw in a, in a container. So this is what my finished product looks like. Now I buy a rutabaga or a turnip and I cut it up into little pieces. Now they're like beyond hard, which means the odds of cutting yourself are just outstanding. So I scrounge around in the produce department and son of a gun, there's some idiot who actually chops these things up and puts them in a container. Here's a nice little container. What have I got here? Um, I don't know. It weighs about a pound, whatever this size container is. But these are all cut up pretty good. Now, at this point, if you just leave them, put them in a bag, they're going to mold and rot. So that's not what you want. So you got to come up with a way to dry them. You don't want to cook them, but you want to dry them. Now, because there's a lot of them in there, I'm going to use a plastic sweater box and you cover it with paper towels in the bottom put a couple of sheets the idea is you want to pull the moisture out and then I'm going to show you how carefully you have to lay these things out now you got to be really careful because this is incre increasingly important you just got to lay them out really carefully okay now at this point you scatter them around Ideally, you would like them one layer deep because you would like them to not be touching wherever they're touching top to bottom. You're liable to get some mold going. Once you get them all nicely spread out like this, then you're going to want to take a paper towel or a couple of them and put on top. Now, this will help some with the drying, but mostly what you're trying to do is keep the bugs off of it. You don't want to get any gnats or fruit flies starting to grow on it. And you're going to set this in a warm spot. It, it can handle some sunshine because you got it covered, whatever. And you want to check it every day or so and take off paper towel and you want to roll things around so that different sides are facing up and different sides are facing down. That's that's the way that'll work. It takes about three weeks, I guess, for them to dry out, and they'll look like that. Then you can put them into a plastic bag, and you store them, and you've got paramecium food for six months to a year already at the exact same time. That's about as easy as it can get. Now, if you got one of these high-tech houses and you have a dehydrator, you can put this stuff on a dehydrator and in about six hours it's finished. Uh, but you got to use a dehydrator. Uh, I'm going to leave these in here long enough to get the dehydrator out because rather than mess with it for three weeks I'm going to put it in the dehydrator and it'll be done tonight and I don't have to worry about the bugs and I don't have to worry about the space and I can probably put fill this up with water and put some baby fish in to grow. So that's how easy it is to get your paramecium food. Let's see if I can angle this out some. When you get your jar going you can see there's one, there's two down in the bottom of the jar. 
so they don't make a mess. The reason I like the rutabaga or the turnip is because they don't color the water. For me, the hay and the grass all color the water, and I can't tell if I've got any paramecium in there. Uh, I get any. I can't show you the ones in here, but this jar is overwhelming with them. So that's how easy it is. Think about giving it a try. You can buy one of these containers for a couple of bucks, or you can buy a small, small turnip or rutabaga for less than a dollar. Carefully cut it up, trying not to bleed too bad, into little um, half inch to one inch squares, and you've got food forever. Thank you for watching.